Hey, welcome into another episode of Halos in the Infield with your host, Todd Fox, and the other two hosts of the show. Randy. <laughs> what up? <laughs> I'm Randy. What up? <laughs> He's Fernando. Yeah, there you go. They're swapping today. Yeah. <laughs> freaky Friday, baby. There you That's go. Monday. There you go. There you go. It gets real freaky in the Artie Moreno era. All the time. <laughs> oh, God. He's Just- all, hey, boy. I like to get freaky with my money. <laughs> no pictures. No pictures. Just Come here, Suzuki. Just I'm add the list. A to deal. Oh my god! Yeah, that that was the news. That was that was coming out of freaking free agency opening up. Everyone's like, "Yes, there's gonna be a flurry of moves." Kurt's I'm like, right. I mean, I get party. it. I get it. We're you know the fucking backup catcher is not going to make us or break us, but seriously, there wasn't a better option. We couldn't go get like Gomes or something. I wanted Stephen Vogue. <laughs> there you not, go. Yeah. Not because Stephen Vogue's like incredible, but he's from Visalia, and I'm basically from Visalia, so it's good enough. He's for him. better than Suzuki at this point. Oh yeah. Well, at least Stephen Vogue could play multiple positions, and at least you know he's he he was a credible major leaguer for a decent run there, and he can catch routine pop ups. Oh, but but see, you, you you're missing out on something, guys. You don't have the ambiance of any other catcher coming in here and doing what Suzuki can do, which is make the throw not only from home to second, but home to center field. That's and the- you can also back clean up. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, That's true. I you know, is there any like is there any way that this wasn't maybe like a please Otani situation? I mean, you know, I don't want to jump to assumptions, but maybe Otani just really likes Kurt Suzuki. That's the only way I could see this, you know. Yeah. Kind of- that and familiar. Yeah, I can't even say that word. I haven't been able to say it for two days. But his relationship with the rest of the staff, I mean, he knows them. Yeah. That's the only thing I could think of. And Artie, Artie must really like him. Or maybe Max Stassi would have liked him too. Well, Stassi's going to meet him because Stassi ain't played 100 games in his fucking career. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing, guys. He's going to, you're going to see Suzuki in there at least 60 to 70 games. Oh, God. That's, that's not looking good, man. No. No. Who's the, who's the, who's the catcher in the minor leagues? Matt, whatever. Face, Dice, whatever. Oh, oh Matt Dice. Dice. Yeah. 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 He's always, God. A, He's always a guy that so the problem is with him is he just he, he can't really hit a curveball too much or a slider, but he had b- gotten better finally last year. But moving him into a new position that kind of screws things up the way you hit. So yeah, but still- remember he was a catcher in college, and people were saying that he's a lot more comfortable. And people said his batting got better because of it. And for the record, we do finally have another catcher in our top thirty that we just signed him from a. He was an international signing this year. Oh, good. Editor Ooh. Cuero, he's expected in 2025 as a ZTA, but I mean, he's a young kid. Oh, well, don't hold your breath till then because yeah. Suzuki still can sign back another uh, one year next year and another one year the year after. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm trying to see. You get a four year deal this offseason watch. Why have, the, why have the Angels done that in their past? If you think about it, their backup catchers have been so lousy. Real like, quick, for the record, Max Stassi's career high games is 88. Oh, yeah, see? Yeah, half of Last game. year was 87. Well, <laughs> to be fair, our it's starters funny. haven't been all that great. I mean, to be honest, I mean, you're not going to get me to say, oh, yeah, that guy was worth the shit other than Benji Molina. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Jeff Math. I'm well, Mike Napoli, but Mike Napoli didn't get a fair shake. No, he didn't. We never really got to see. I mean, other than that and injuries, you really never got to see the real Mike Napoli. Yeah, yeah. Or, or he got held back by by either social or injuries. I mean, it's just historically, we're a really bad organization when it comes to catchers. Always have been, like you said. I mean, you know, we can name three guys, but when we're naming best catchers in history, and I can throw out Chris Iannetta's name and not get laughed at the building. Right. That tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. Chris Aynetta, serviceable catcher on any or in or, any organization. Mm-hmm. But when you're talking about a top catcher of all time in your organization and Chris Aynetta's name's in there, that's where the problems, you know, start to rise. And, and yeah, here, I agree. 
And here's my thing when it comes to catchers and playoff teams. They're some, they're almost right there with with teams that win. They usually have good catchers. Yankees, yep. Gary Sanchez, Giants, uh, and Giants, Buster Posey, Buster Posey. You know, and Mike Matheny. Even though he wasn't the most hard hitting, uh, you know, he's a good manager now. But when he was in the league, you know, he had he was good on every team he was on. Uh, Yadier Molina. Uh, the list goes on because they, Mike Piazza and the Dodgers. Yeah, and, and you get Dodgers, the Dodgers, Mets, Mets. Yeah, yeah. And look at look at the Angels' only World Series run, and, and most of their playoffs they had either Napoli or Molina. You take those guys yeah. away, there's a bunch of crap, you know. And then they had Chris Sainet in 2014. Well, yeah, Chris, you know, Chris once Sainet. again, I mean, <laughs> but he was the most recent good catcher, yeah, and and he was decent, serviceable catcher. Could you say good? I would I would say good. Okay, because he, like I'll like I'll be real, like Stassi, he could be a good catcher. He just Dude, you gotta play at least 120 fucking games, bro. You gotta stay yeah. healthy too. You soft ass son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But especially in a position where, you know, catchers are supposed to notoriously be, you know, healthy and fit. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it's such a demanding position. Like, can anybody make the argument that the catcher isn't the best athlete on the field in most cases? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You can't you have to be. You know, and there's some exceptions to every rule, but nine times out of ten, in any level of baseball, the catcher is always the most athletic. And Bobby sports. Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> Man, he was a can't miss prospect, huh? You know, I, I can go back to some pretty lame ones, dude. Greg Myers, George Fabregas. Oh man. Uh, yeah, some some real terrible catchers. Uh Carlos Perez. Matt Wallback. <laughs> Fuck you, Todd. <laughs> yeah. One guy who I was really hoping was was gonna stick around was Jet Bandy. I really liked him in uh, what 2016. He was he was fun to watch near the end there. He came over with the Brewers, right? Something like yeah. that. Oh, he got traded to the Brewers. Oh, traded to the Brewers. Okay. Yeah, we traded him for Martin Maldonado. And who was the catcher in 2020? We got rid of. Didn't even give him a fair shot. Or was it 2021? No, it was 2020, right? The uh, he was left-handed catcher Castro. Castro, I thought he didn't really get a fair shake or, you know, too many at-bats with us. And then he goes to Houston, does really good. Of course. Yeah, but he was a long-term uh, project, you know. Or not a long-term. He was a, a veteran catcher. My apologies. I'd rather have him than Suzuki, to be honest, though. Oh, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I mean, we, we are scraping the bottom of the barrel with Suzuki. So. Yeah, uh, speaking of, of the bottom of the barrel, man, there's a lot going on right now in terms of – Free or a free agency or lack thereof for the Angels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you? Well, let me ask you guys this real quick off the bat. Shortstop, are you guys good with what we got right now, or you think we really need to sign a shortstop? Renifo. Well, between Renifo and is it Velasquez from uh, the Yankees? Tyler Wade. We got Tyler Wade as well. What do you think? Uh, nope. Because <laughs> that's a glaring hole. Glaring, even with those two dudes there. I think the tough part, though, is just knowing that shortstop is not the priority. You know, Artie's going to Artie, right? <laughs> so we know there's a move coming at shortstop. Yeah, okay. big one. Honestly, like, as the days progress, you know, like, if you would have told me the beginning of the season, the Angels – or beginning of the offseason, sorry, the Angels are going to sign Carlos Correa, I would have been like, <laughs> that's not going to happen. And now I'm getting more and more worried – that it's going to happen, <laughs> you know, or Trevor's story. And, you know, uh -huh. here's the thing. Will either of those guys make the lineup better? Sure. I don't think yeah. there's any denying that. But the problem is always that we go for the biggest name. How many times have I said this on the show, fellas? We always go for the big, biggest name, never the right ones. Yep. yep. I actually think – Trevor story is going to fall into our lap, dude. Uh, that's yeah. I, I think I think the other teams are going to pass on him. Correa will go either the Yankees or Houston. No, the Yankees got a shortstop. They got a Zay Connor for Leffa, and they got Josh Donaldson. Yep, oh, that's right. Okay, well then he's going to go somewhere else because <laughs> I know he's not going to come here. I have a feeling Artie's not going to pony up <sighs> that much with with Otani on the horizon. I, if he wasn't on the horizon for a contract, I'd be like, yeah, Correa for sure. But I think I think Story's just going to fall into his lap, and he and you know you could do your Artie impersonation and be all excited about getting Story because I think that would happen. Because Story's going to be what half the tickles. price of Korea. What happened? He's going to be at least what half the price of Korea. Maybe less than half. I wonder what Trevor Story's projected at. 
I would figure what 180 maybe, maybe 200. I heard 200 last season, but the way he left Colorado, the, or the way the way he stayed in Colorado, the way he was a pain in the ass, mm-hmm. I think that really hurt his value. And then the fact that you had so many damn shortstops, where you teams could be like, we don't necessarily have to pay a high dollar for a shortstop unless we're getting a Correa or the dude that went to um, that left Toronto. Um, I'm God, I'm blanking on his name too. He went to the uh, Rangers. Um, Marcus Simeon? Yeah, Simeon. Yeah. Dude, you were clamoring for him for like the last year. I was going to forget his name. <laughs> I know, dude. I know. It's been a Todd's long time. Todd's getting old. I am. I am. Todd's lost his touch. All right. So, <laughs> cover a story. So, here's his projected salary. And you know what? Now that I see that number, I'm not as freaked out. Mm-hmm. Five years, 125. Oh, yeah. I, I actually think it's going to be like f- uh, four years and 100. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I would, mean, would you guys pull the trigger on that? Oh, you I know, mean, we with... need a shortstop, and he he could play the spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but those home runs that you saw in Colorado are doubles in Anaheim, brother. <laughs> yes, I'm not even kidding. Special, especially at night when that ball drops, because they don't travel well at night with that marine layer. No, no. <laughs> He's projected <laughs> about 251 this season with a 329 on base percentage, 24 home runs, and 75 RBIs. That should factor into his price too. Yeah, but those are the brother, projections. you ain't gonna come here and hit bombs like you were. So you, yeah, we ain't paying you that much. You know, we're actually, paying you to hit some doubles. <laughs> when Trevor, uh, what Trevor? Uh, what, sorry, when Andrew and I uh, were doing our uh, our show before, uh, he actually did a deep dive into Trevor's story, and he said that like eighty seven percent of his home runs would be out of every single ballpark in baseball. So, I mean, if we're talking, like, the difference here between 32 home runs and, like, 26 home runs, I am okay with that, especially because if those balls aren't going out. Like you said, they're doubles. You know, we don't exactly need a home run hitter. We no. kind of have enough of those. Get on we need guys to drive in runs, and we need right. guys to protect some of the other guys in the lineup. I could definitely see a guy like a Trevor Story slotting into bat seventh or eighth. Because here, he doesn't have to be the guy. This isn't Mm -hmm. Colorado. He doesn't have to be the offense. Here, he just has to be a player on the team. Right. I I just hope that that factors into what he's getting paid because I don't want want to have to pay him for the fucking home runs that he was hitting in Colorado because fuck that, you ain't going to – you know, you're not going to completely come in here and do that. But, you know, if we can get him for, you know, five years, 150, 160, I'm totally on board. Well, and that's the thing that pisses me off about free agency. Most of these times, you're paying for what the guy was. Yeah. Look what happened with Albert Pujols. You know what I mean? And it happens all the time in baseball. It's not even just an Angels problem. It happens everywhere. That The fact that right now these contracts are so inflated, and, you know, it's not the economy. Baseball contracts have been inflated for the last, like, five, six years. Yep. They, they keep going up. And the problem is that it's now starting to become impractical that these players will live up to these contracts. Right now, the Mike Trout contract's fine and dandy. I can promise you in five or six years, we're going to want Mike Trout's, you know, fans are going to want his head on a stick. Yeah. You know, and people are going to be like, why are we paying this guy so much money? You know what I mean? It's like Angels fans are so fickle, and it's fine because we're definitely on that that train. Yeah, You know what I mean? We're the first ones to give Rendon a lap dance if he's doing well. And Randy's the first one in line to make a funny meme when he's not. And that's what (laughs) fans do. It's natural. But what I'm saying is, you know, these contracts are just becoming massive. Yeah, you know, well, we're paying for a lot of these players. I I, I believe if you look at what story, if, if, if story were to come here and give us about 20 and maybe 71 RBIs and a 250 average stuff like that, like you guys said, if he can get on base, move guys over, get, uh, you know, drive in some runs here and there, you couple that with Upton, if Upton can come close to 20 home runs again, if he could stay healthy, if, we're, if we have them all year or Adele, uh, guys like that do their thing. Trout does his thing. We're all projecting that Rendon's going to pop off and have a good comeback season you know, Walsh in there, Otani. That's a that's a dangerous lineup. You get a few guys. Absolutely. You get a few guys. That's an Oakland type lineup to where I remember going to a game like three years ago, or I think it was 2019 pre-pandemic, and it was like in September, and I, and 
I, I was why I well, didn't pay too much attention to Oakland for like a month prior to that, and they were making their playoff run like they normally do. And looking up and down the lineup when they showed the starting lineup, like everyone, like eight of the nine guys had twenty home runs or more. Oh shit! And I'm I mean there, consistency. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there, yeah. and I'm like, God, these guys are good, and 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 I think the Angels can put together a lineup like that. Uh, to be honest, yeah. so we're gonna have to if we don't get pitching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, no kidding, so, dude. I just uh, really hope I really hope that just Perry's working them fucking phones behind the scenes, dude. That's all we can hope, unfortunately. Uh Carlos Correa projected contract. So he wants a Francisco Lindor contract from every indication I have. So he's gonna be somewhere in the ballpark of wanting 10 years, 341 million dollars. Yeah, that's too much for him, I I think. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't had a full healthy year. He, so he wants about 34 a year. And that's just what he's projecting. I would imagine he wants more. I was figuring right around the $400 million mark, dude. That's what they were saying right off the bat. Yeah. Because me and James were talking the other night. And it's like, you know, he may land in that ballpark. And then we were talking about just like the same thing Fernando was talking about, just how inflated these contracts are. And uh, could you imagine – because you figure in the next maybe five years, we'll probably see the first $500 plus million dollar player. I don't well, who's it going to be? Juan Soto? That, that's a, that, and that, I think that's the player I named. Otani? Okay. I, I, yeah. It's could you be imagine, one of those guys, probably. Could you imagine the next maybe 10 to 15, dude? We'll see the first billion dollar player, dude. No it's, way. It has, I don't, it's, oh, there's a lot. I don't there's know. The way be these baseball somewhere. contracts are going. I mean, these yeah. things are just getting out of hand rapidly. I think the next CBA, they're going to ratify that. To be honest, they're no, gonna, I fucking you know, hope so, dude. It's got, what? it's got to, it's got to be something like the NFL where you put a cap on it. There, there's got to be. You got to. Yeah. Well, and it's crazy because Steve Cohen, when they told him what like the ta- the salary tax was, he's like, okay, yeah, he's like, wank, wank. I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna go over it. It was like shit. what, like two million dollars or something like that for like every like couple million over. It's like what, like that's. That's Trump chase to most of these owners, at least a sane I owner who want wants to I want an win. owner like that, dude. I want an owner like that so fucking bad. Well, we say that. I mean, Steve Cohen's obviously had his own controversy since he owned the Mets. Nowhere near Arnie Moreno. Like, Steve Cohen has probably just, like, normal people controversies. Arnie Moreno has, like, I'm a bad person controversies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's, killing people controversies. <laughs> I'm, ra- I'm raping the city of their land. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's just the, the it's just a oh, man. It's horrible. I was gonna, I was gonna say a, a joke. We'll save it for off air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It's just, I don't know, man. Artie, Artie Moreno just continuously pisses us fans off, and you know, it's tough because no matter what, I will love this team. It's not the players' fault that Artie Moreno's a scumbag. You know. And well, and then you got look this season going into it. There's there's hope. There's a lot of free agency still there. There's a lot of teams that weren't able to adjust their payroll, so they're going to have to make trades. There's a shortened spring training. Uh, mm-hmm. There was no workouts, which which either is going to really help the Angels or hurt them, because some teams are going to go after real slow starts, and hopefully the Angels for the 500th time aren't one of those teams. April is so goddamn key to this team. No uh, matter, no matter the usually season. brutal. Yeah, so so the Angels got to find some continuity and continuity fast, and they got to get off to a good start and uh, avoid the injury bug. And with a new training staff, maybe that's a possibility we could do that. Because I'm telling you, yeah, April well, is, new training April, staff. April is the key, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you got to set the tone. You got to set the tone. And you know what? It's not even about wins and losses in April. I think it, but it is about playing good quality game. Yeah, you can lose the month of April. I mean, you can win 10 games in April, but if you're in every single game, if your guys are healthy, mm-hmm. if the mentality is in the right place, that's what people look at. You know, like these guys are professionals. Mm-hmm. I don't, I legitimately believe that pro baseball players don't care about scores as much as they care about like the vibe in the clubhouse. That tells you everything you know. Like, look at 2017. That was really the last successful Angels team. Did they make the playoffs? No. But they were very close, especially considering the fact that Mike Trout was hurt, what, for like 60% of that year? Yeah, yeah. You know, and in 2017, like, they were were loose. They were having fun the entire time. They had good 
quality clubhouse guys. I think it started with a guy like Cameron Maven and kind of worked its way down. Absolutely. But, you know, those guys wanted to have fun. So I think if they can do that this year, it's going to help. And like you said, new training staff is going to make a difference. And one thing I want to ask you guys real quick is I, I love the bullpen. And that's just, that's a statement. But the but my question is starting. Uh, starting pitching right now as it goes, you got Thor, you got Otani, you got Sandoval. Who do you plug in as your four and five? Because you got Canning, you got Bachman, you got uh, Suarez, uh, you got Packy, Detmers. Well, apparently Lorenzen was promised a fucking starting job. Yeah, so Lorenzen won him right off yeah. the bat. So okay. you kind of have to give him one because okay. that's – yeah, exactly what they said. You give And when healthy, one. you can't tell me Sandoval wasn't, a, like, pitching his ass off last year. And he was looking pretty good, too. I think he got hurt, and then that was it. Well, the training staff helped him. Remember, it was only supposed to be like for a week, and then they they touched him, and he was out for the. Oh yeah, time. the old, the old. He's got a he's got a hangnail. A day later, yeah, he gets yeah. out the rest of the season. He got a torn ACL. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They got intense. They got intense in the uh, training room there. Plus, he had a flesh eating bacteria too. Yeah. I thought that was Alex oh. Cobb. Oh yeah, that was Cobb. That's Cobb. Oh man, he ate away his hand. Yeah, right. <laughs> so with Thor, Otani, Sandoval, uh, Lorenzen. Who's your five? I throw Suarez in there, dude. You know, I'm gonna give Suarez number six. And the reason for that is because we can slot him in the bullpen on the days that or the weeks where we have an off day. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, you kind of need that every six day for Otani. Oh, the getaway day, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so okay. if there's like a day where you know if we're going to be pitching all six pitchers that week because there's no off day, then that's when you plug Suarez in. And on a week where we can plan ahead and we don't need to use him in the uh, rotation, then we can put him in the bullpen in case one of our guys gets uh, uh, canned early. Because uh, Suarez seems like that kind of guy. And he was thriving really well when he was bouncing back and forth. True, true. What do you I, think I say maybe, maybe Detmers, unless you make a trade for Castillo. Then I, I would think Detmers would have to be part of that trade. I, I think yeah. De Detmers and, and Adele would be, but but that's yeah. but that's a that's a good move though. Uh, having Detmers at five, no pressure. So yeah. and Suarez, I like that move too, because uh, he he seemed to be a tone setter too. He he could he could throw a lot of innings, so that was good. Oh, yeah. yeah, I want to give Griffin Canning the benefit of the doubt because like you know we drafted him so high yeah. a couple of years ago, you know in the Billy Up uh, Billy Epler days. And, you know, say what you want about Billy Epler and, you know, his lack of success here as a general manager. But one thing I will say is that we're finally starting to get to the point where a lot of his guys are coming up and yeah. producing. You know, Sandoval yeah. was a trade. You know, uh, Suarez was an international uh, free agent. Uh, you know, we're seeing these guys, Joe Adele, Brandon Morris, mm -hmm. finally start to get to the major league level and produce. And so far, a lot of those top picks by Billy Epler have looked good. When yeah. healthy, that's the caveat. But I don't know, man. Like, I, I said it before. I do not think Billy Epler was the pro problem. Yeah. yeah Billy Epler, a... if given the keys, would have been a great general manager. I Arguably agree. one of the best in baseball. I agree. Sue me. He's, do he's doing a great job in New York. That's for damn sure. I said he would. Well, and you and Courtney laughed at me. He's well, uh... a... <laughs> Well, hey, I, I'll fucking say, it, dude. I mean, I, I wasn't, I wasn't one sitting here preaching Billy Epler's name. I was, I was giving him bullshit too, and he, he's fucking, he's, it's, it's proving me wrong, dude. It's, it's proven right now. It's a fucking Artie problem because Epler in New York right now, he's got the fucking keys to the franchise, dude. He, he all he's got to do is ask, hey, it's Uncle Steve. Can I get this guy? If fuck Uncle Steve wants him, like, go get the motherfucker. Steve's like, have fun, man. Cost. Go he get him. Get what you need. That's what Cohen told him, dude. He said, go get what you fucking need. Mm -hmm. Artie's saying, he's basically like that video. I'm asking you not to spend money. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, Randy? He fucking I voted with three of the fucking small market clubs to not raise the fucking luxury tax, dude. Yep. Again, that's I wasn't all even you surprised. need to know about this bastard. He's, he's a cheap son of a bitch when it comes yeah. to pitching. I mean, he'll throw all the money in the world to fucking position players, but that's not going to win you championships. Yeah. He'd be Absolutely. the perfect Rockies owner. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Oh no, Pirates! Yeah. Well, at least the, at least the Pirates can draft. I'll give them that. <laughs> they're they're a good yeah, AAA true. farm team for other teams. That's for sure. Um. Oh man. You know, 
it, well, it, yeah. it is frustrating. I'll just say this about well, Cohen real quick and the Mets and Epler. Yeah, I was wrong too. I didn't give the guy any credit, but now you look into this season, 2022, the Braves are your con- are your contending world champions or returning world champions. They're in your mm-hmm. division, and you're already favored over them. The Mets are locked and loaded. Yeah. You know, and I got a bigger kick in the nuts for you boys. You think Billy – you know, people used to give Billy Epler a hard time. Dude, we hated Jerry DePoto when he was here. And look at him. Now, it yep. wasn't a Jerry DePoto problem. No. It was an Arturo Moreno problem. Artie Moreno went big. And we found out what happens when you put all your chips in the center and it doesn't pan out. Your team is trash for years because the Angels didn't have a farm system. It wasn't even the fact that the Angels didn't have a farm system. It was the fact that they had a historically bad farm system. Yep. It was a farm system where Caleb Coward was, you know, <laughs> the cream of the crop in your uh, uh, your farm system. You know, Cole Calhoun, David Fletcher, those guys slipped through the cracks, but, you know, didn't have a lot of success there for about half a decade. Yeah, and you you yeah. could see what Epler has done in New York, and you could see what DePoto's done in Seattle, and I think Seattle's staff and their ownership decided, hey, we're going to trust you, and, and and you could fix this if you know you, you talk a big game. Let's see what you could do. They trusted him, and at first, I'm telling you, Seattle fans, because I do listen to KJR because I'm a Seahawks fan, then they'll talk Mariners fans from time to time up there, and and when they talked about the Mariners, they crushed Depoto the first couple of years he was there because it didn't make sense to them, but right. he had he had a time period of how he was going to do things, and lo and behold, look what he did the other day, getting another player off a Reds team that was building up to something. Now they're purging, mm-hmm. but he's taking advantage of these trades. His farm system looks good. The Mariners, I'm ta- I'm telling you, they're going to be a thorn in our side for the next four years at least. Probably. Oh, no yeah. doubt. It. I mean, because I'll tell you right now, looking back, you know, high side's only 2020, but looking back now, dude, there's no way Jerry DePoto would have signed out with fucking Pujols, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's no way. Complete. That was a complete Artie move. I guarantee you DePoto says, Artie, that's a bad move, and Artie didn't listen to him. I guarantee you that probably happened. Yeah, that, that's not a DePoto guy. You, no. you just just look at that look at that Seattle uh that team. They've got club owned guys for a while. Yep. They got controlled yep. guys. They've got uh youth. Uh you know, he's rebuilt that farm system better than I ever thought it would be. They're like a top five. Oh, and you know who else is doing that? Huh. Harry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. What the Angels don't realize, you know, maybe now they're starting to. This isn't the baseball that we grew up with. The evil empire, you know, like the Yankees, doesn't really exist anymore. Sure, you have hybrid teams like the Dodgers are a perfect example of a hybrid team. And I hate the Dodgers. And you know why I hate the Dodgers? Because they do it so well. If the Dodgers were losing all the time, we wouldn't even care. We wouldn't even look in their direction. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, and you know, I'm going to get hate for this. If we're all honest, we know when Dodger fans are like, you guys are just jealous. Yeah, we are just jealous that you guys do it the right way. I will, as a baseball fan, I will tip my cap to a team who drafts well, develops well, signs free agents properly. I wish we had that. For a little while, I had some hope thinking that Perry was going to do that. And I'm not going to just throw Perry under the bus immediately. This is his first full year where, you know, we, well, you know, we had the whole CBA situation, which we'll get to, but I mean, I don't know, man. It's just, it'll be interesting to see what he can pull off with a full off season. Sure. There was some disturbance there, but you guys get what I mean. Well, it's just like we talked about, you know, with the whole, uh, the Poto and Epler situation, like we should know now it's not fucking Perry. It's not his fault. Mm-hmm. If, if it, like I said, if anything, either there's only, there's only two scenarios playing out right now. And that's either Artie's realizing his errors of the ways, and that's why he went out and got Perry and then told him, hey, you know, after this year, you know, let's get through this year. Let's get through the draft. And, you know, I may not be able to – I'm not going to probably spend a lot of money, but I need you to work your magic, you know, maybe work a trade. Or Artie's just doing what Artie always does and just says, you know, do what, do what you can with what you have. I'm I'm hoping it's like what you're saying, like for right now, let Perry do what he can 
as as in you know like what you were saying but like spend a little here spend a little here but get to the otani contract once the otani contracts out of the way then here's the keys to the car uh because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm hoping they have a plan it seems like they do the minor league systems coming together like you guys mentioned uh you know if if we can get a contender i mean we should in all actuality make the postseason this year with added teams now we're up to 12 uh you know this this has got to work for us this year i'm, I'm feeling good vibes but Here's a question I have for you guys too. Uh, With a plethora of pitching, obviously, and the the pitchers that are right there on the cusp that they're not going to do much more down in Triple A in, in Salt Lake. Um, you know, they're 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 either been like your Cannings, your Suarez's pitchers like that. And now with them talking Joe Madden saying Trout needs to go to a corner position, that's gonna push that guarantees Marshall be on the opening day roster if that happens. You now have a Dell free. They made it official today that he's going to stay in center. Oh, he is. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. But, but but you have. You know, Mike Trout walked in there and he's like, "Yeah, listen here, you old kook. That's not going to happen." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, put put the ganja away. Uh, but but yeah, Mike, go back to your van and smoke it, and then come back, bro. Yeah, tell me what year it is when you go in your uh, time traveling machine. Nineteen eighty five. But my question is though, with the, like those pitchers, those are like your your C's to maybe a B minus pitcher. Do you think we can get any equity for those guys? Fill in the holes. Are you, you do you guys see a trade coming before the season starts? I'm hoping so. I mean, honestly, I think really the only the only logical trade that makes any sense for the Angels hmm. is Castillo. And honestly, I think that's going to take one of Adele or Marsh, and to, complete, to be completely honest, I'd rather keep Marsh. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think then I think it, it, it's going to take either Reed, and this is why I'm hoping, because honestly, I think Reed's better than Canning. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah, he that's also why I'm hoping Canning has a really good fucking spring and shows that, okay, maybe last year was just a down year. Mm-hmm. Because you know, and every he, other year, yeah. Because <laughs> is he the right hand? He, he's a trade chip. I, I think. I think other teams look at Canning's like, I would take that on. I mean, he's he's under club control for what the next five years? I think yeah, he's got he's got a while. I think three more years. Yeah. And, and he's got a lively arm. If he could put it yeah. together, you know, he he reminds me of what Heaney should have been for us a few years ago. He should have been mm-hmm. a trade chip. You know, back then, before before he started throwing beach balls in New York, you know, yeah, like <laughs> I mean, Canning Canning's a nice pitcher. I would love for him to succeed. I just don't think he fits us. I really don't. I'll tell you one he's thing: he's not a free agent until twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty twenty six. He's not a free agent until twenty twenty six. Yeah. Wouldn't that pull some value for a team? Well, like- what? I've been saying that all off season. I've been saying like, hey, we can like maybe. Get up to wave his no trade clause and give somebody Griffin Canning. Obviously, we're not going to be able to do that now because we're too far into the you know we're too close to spring training starting. There's no way they get rid of Upton. But I was saying at the beginning of the off season, like, hey, you guys should dangle Griffin Canning over someone's head. I mean, the guy's only 26 years old, has a ton of control left. That is valuable. People are like, well, Griffin Canning's not good. People don't want that. And what people don't realize is the like the amount of um, What's the word I'm looking for? Appeal that a guy who's young with that amount of control has over other teams. Mm-hmm. Because there's yeah, always you just that... really hope that Canning and Detmers really have you know have white out springs, man. Because well, because one one of them's going to be our in our starting rotation. Yeah. I don't see both of them being in there. And plus, not, have... not with who we have there right now. There's no way. There's no way those two guys together fit in the same rotation with the guys we have in there. Only one only one fits in there. So one Absolutely. of them has to be traded for something. Because I don't see one of them going to the bullpen. Yeah. I mean, you could, I guess, but I mean Well you also yeah, I mean, have when you got a solid trade tip on the table and you and you got some glaring needs, you fucking use it. Yeah. Because you got a couple other pitchers that are knocking on the door right now. Uh what was, was mm-hmm. the one that got injured last year? Uh was it Chris um Oh Rodriguez. Yeah you got Rodriguez C Rod. Yes. I they should have traded C Rod when they had the chance, though. They should have traded him. Yeah. He's always hurt. He's great, but he's always hurt. Oh, yeah. always. You got C Rod and they got Bachman. They they really are pushing Bachman either for a long reliever or a fringe starter. 
So you yeah. got those guys that are right there. So, I mean, you, for the first time in a long time, we have a log jam. I mean, we've seen yeah. all we've seen out of Packy in the minors. He's he's ready to go. You know, what if you pack, package Packy and, and uh, Canning, pay half of uh, Upton's contract and try there to – There you go. Somewhere? There you go. Maybe. I mean, you know, like you said, it's a good problem to have. You know, we might be a, another year away from – having a situation where if we still have those guys where it's then it really is an issue, a good issue to have mm -hmm. because we haven't had this in a long time before Griffin Kenny was assumed he was going to make it. Oh yeah. You know, it was like, Oh, well he's in. And now it's, he's got to work for it. And that's yeah. good. Competition breeds, you know, people performing to the best of their ability. Absolutely. It's not a guaranteed spot. He's got to earn it now. So we'll see what happens. I mean, you know, it's, it'll be interesting. It really will. No, the, the, that's the thing about baseball. Now that the CBA is over, we have a thousand storylines to go over. You know, there's, oh yeah, you know, guys, <laughs> who, who's going to make the bullpen? Who's going to be, you know, the the starting shortstop? You know, second baseman, uh, outfielding positions. Uh, there's just a lot to talk about, and we're all hyped up. It's April seventh is now opening day. So speaking of storylines, has does anybody figure out what's going on with Rendon and his family? I don't, I don't know, man. I haven't guess seen anything. Good as mine. Same with Rysel Iglesias, just didn't show up, and they have no idea why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, they, yeah. they have a few dollars on those guys, so they might want to check into it. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you guys uh, shoot me a text, maybe email? Yeah. <laughs> Let me know you're good. Send me a, send me a WhatsApp. Yeah. A WhatsApp, oh, man. Rysel. Oh. A smoke signal? Anything? <laughs> yeah, Rendon's one in Texas, so yeah, yeah. You, you'll find him at the uh, at the Spring Creek with his family <laughs> wearing his boots and his ten gallon hat. Shoot, sure. he's got he's got the look. <laughs> he definitely has a look. He looks like someone out of Tombstone. <laughs> with the the cowboy hat on. Yeah, right. You'll find him in the town where uh, they have the uh, the city council meeting at the barbershop. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one thing, uh, one thing I do want to say before we stray too far from like the whole uh, pitching that we were just talking about, mm -hmm. I like our bullpen this year. Oh yeah, this is oh, one I of the first mm -hmm. times where I can sit back and be like, "That's a pretty nasty bullpen." Yeah, we got some arms. I mean, we could we could use Skaggs, R.I.P. his his uh, saying for the bullpen, just for the bullpen. We're nasty. Can I take a, a second, real quick, to like hype our dude, dude Ty Buttrey's back. <laughs> <laughs> Butter, yeah, no, yeah, no I'm, I'm excited. excited for Ty, man. Yeah, dude, the guy, the work he's put in, he looks really, really good. Um, the fact that he's able to have like super, uh, I, I, I don't mean in a mean way because I mean, this guy knows what he's doing, but super like coherent conversations. Where like when he sets up, he immediately is like conscious of oh you know I'm I my my back leg's too straight things like that or oh I'm on the wrong side of the rubber. The fact that he's able to like now sit back because his perspective changed and he can truly appreciate the mechanics and everything. Uh, he, he's going to be nasty this year. Obviously, Aaron Loop is going to be a beast in the eighth inning role. Rysel's Rysel. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of potential in the bullpen this year. You know, obviously oh, yeah. Austin Warren. Austin Warren, yeah. They they've got a lot of lively arms, and then and then again, same thing with the starting pitching. You look at the trash pandas. You look at the bees. They got guys knocking on the door down there too. So, uh, Artie's really got this pitching um, staff, and 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 uh, you know the minors, the, at least the, the pitching. Is getting really, really, uh, you know, getting really good to the point where, yeah, like you said, there could be trade pieces in the future. There could just be guys that are just going to freaking come out and surprise you, you know, and that's a good thing to have. I mean, guys just knocking on the door, putting up good numbers in the minors because for years the minor league teams were, were terrible. So oh, yeah. the, the bullpen is, is definitely one of the things going into this season where I'm sitting there like, I'm not even worried about that. They're going to do their thing, you know. And, and you know what? Let's look at it this way. There was a lot of games that that bullpen blew last year. I mean, how many times did we freaking come on on live with the Buttercup song? Early yeah, on. Now imagine, now imagine the bullpen, oh, I don't know, doesn't blow like maybe 10 of those games. It's a different we're, team. We're, we're, yeah, it's a, we're winning, what, 90 games now? Yeah, we're a playoff yeah. team. 
Same yeah. with 2020. We led the league in blown saves. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. you look at it. Uh, our April, May, and June last year was god-awful in the bullpen. So mm-hmm. guys like Steve Ciszek, who finished the year with like a under two ERA and was flamethrown after the All Star break, he was nails. He yeah. was God. I mean, they were this close from DFAing him. I mean, Grillmaster was and DFAing him on a nightly basis. He was DFAing everybody. That doesn't mean <laughs> anything. It's like when you give people free samples at Costco. But you also had Myers, who could pitch fucking wonders at home. But when he got on the road, he was. Who the fuck is this guy? Yes. You know, honestly, I think Mike Myers is going to do really well this year, and it's because you'll have some of the pressure taken off of him. You know, it's not going to be so. it's not going to be an eighth inning situation where he was kind of expected to be the guy because he did so well in 2020. He'll have a little bit more of a, uh, you know, uh, the pressure lifted off of him, especially with Ty coming back, because now you can have those guys alternate in the seventh inning. Oh, not to mention you also have Austin Warren. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You yep. know what I mean? So who is very capable of pitching the seventh inning. Once again, competition makes guys better. And, and we this, were – Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, we were just in a situation for years where people might have gotten complacent. And, you know, these are professionals, but everybody gets complacent at work. Everybody. I don't care who you are. Mm-hmm. So yep. when you have the next guy up behind you spanking your ass, telling you to hurry because, you know, hey, they want that spot mm-hmm. – it's going to make people better. And they have the right type of players. These guys are young and they're hungry. So you yep. want that hunger. And, and you know, maybe this is a situation where these our starters don't have to pitch seven innings like before. Maybe they only have to get to the sixth inning. And, and then, and then you know, if they can't go six and a third or something like that, you got the right guys that can go in there and get it done. The Royals did that going to two straight World Series. Just, hey, just get us to the fifth inning, sixth inning, and that we're going to throw that flame-throwing bullpen at you, and good luck. So yeah. we'll see We'll see what happens. I'm not saying they're on the Royals level, but but maybe, just maybe, they're getting close to that, to where we can have some shutdown guys. Like you said, Fernando, you can alternate guys. What a freaking uh, good problem to have being Joe Madden and, and the staff realizing, okay, I've got, I've got potential setup guys – up and down this bullpen. Yeah, we might. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, this is, you know, this isn't the days of Jared Weaver and stuff like that where guys are going eight, nine complete games. You know, I think with yeah. analytics and the way the game is going, I think it, it's a bullpen game now. Mm-hmm. You know, you have your starters, they'll go five, six innings, you know, and then the bullpen takes the takes it the rest of the way. I mean, that's just where the game's at. So, you know, we, you know, you got to have guys in the bullpen that can, that can you know, be workhorses for you. And I think yeah. it's like you guys said, I think we got it. Mm-hmm. Uh, another guy who we're like blatantly just completely dunking on who we're not talking about, Kenny Rosenberg. He oh, yeah. can also come out as a bullpen arm. He was used as a bullpen arm. He has the potential to, you know, do that and be effective. And a spot you know? starter, right? Yeah, and a spot starter. Mm-hmm. You know, I know he wants to start, but I mean, you know, I'm sh- he wants to just come up to the show. Mm-hmm. You know, he said that on our show when he came on. Yeah, it's it's that that's a, that's an arm I forgot about too, and he's got a yeah. lively arm. So absolutely, yeah. I, I saw a lot of I, his curveball in some of those uh, off season videos he was posting was was pretty good, man. Especially on a, against the righty, the way he just kind of collapses in on a righty's knee. That's what you want. You're going to make them swing all day looking silly, too. And see, <laughs> see, the way we're talking about the pitching, this just reiterates, you know, like right when you when, – when honestly, you kind of be like, damn, come on, Perry. When you start talking about what we got, and it's like, okay, trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's funny you even say that because when we were just, just like explaining it, I'm just, I was thinking that same thing. It's like, holy shit, like, no, it's – Maybe not all that bad, you know? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Another guy. We're calling who, uh, the realization live, motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, right. Another guy, uh, he was only on the 66ers last year, but he went to the Arizona Fall League, did really well, especially coming out of the bullpen and in a spot starter role. Coleman Crow. He's young, oh, yeah. but there is a very decent chance that Coleman Crow will make the jump to AAA this year. And then from there, you don't know what happened. You just need to get to AAA because when you get to AAA, you are one call away from the dance. And when you get to the dance, you can do anything in the show. Mm-hmm. So, you know, once again, we're in a situation now where we're starting to talk about guys who have potential. You know, and a lot of people are like, well, the Angels are, you know, bottom 30 right now in, uh, in terms of farm systems. Yeah, but we have a lot of high upside guys. Mm-hmm. And, and, 
And that's the thing too. I mean, with all these pitching uh, players that that we have coming through the system, you don't necessarily have to keep them all if they're not ready for the major league level. Because if you're not drafting good position players, you could always flip those guys for other uh, organizations' position players and absolutely. stack your uh, stack your lineups that way. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's there's definite like options right there. See, everything sounds good. And trust in the process, and then one name goes through my head, and I'm like, ah, fucking Terry. Uh, yeah, right. I, I think of Kurt Suzuki, and I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, I Suzuki. just I just think we're so used to being let down because that's just how it has been. Yes. You know, um, I, I don't think Perry is going to be the kind of guy who wants to mortgage the future, but the unfortunate thing about that is if this was three or four years ago, that wouldn't be a big deal. I wouldn't mind being patient. But right now, the Angels have the problem that – their uh, gap is going to close very quickly. Oh, yeah. They have a short window. And I've been saying that. And miraculously, it seems like every year the window is extended at least one more year. Mm. Honestly, I think the Angels have a three year window here to compete. Mm. Trout's going to get out of his prime pretty quick here. He's turning, you know, he, what, he's 30 now? Yeah. Shohei Otani is currently in his prime, but you only have two more years of him in theory. Anthony Rendon, you know, he's under contract for what, like five more years, but same thing. He's only got about two or three more years of his prime left, and the injury bug might have already hit him. Adele and Marsh are going to start hitting their prime. So you are in a situation here where, oh, Jared Walsh, David Fletcher, two more guys. So, guys, this is the best shot we have now. Mm -hmm. So you need to go in. This might be the situation where if this was the Jerry DePoto thing where we're putting our chips in the center of the table, this is probably okay because this is probably your last window for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I see it about, about a three-year window. Yeah, that, That's I why mean, – that's why, as an Angels fan, you're focusing a lot on what the miners do because those trade chips may, may come up and, and you may need to use those. And like you said, go all in, mortgage some of that stuff, that, that equity that you built up to try to, 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 to force the, the major league roster to get better and, and you know, uh, facilitate and have more cushion to play with. Uh, the, the more more talent you have on this major league roster, the better. I think right now as we're constructed, my opinion – we're we're a guaranteed third right now, third place. Yeah. I, I I don't I don't I I think Texas is still rebuilding. They they've done a few nice things. Yeah, they're not they're, they're going to be in the the cellar. I still think that are the A's. If the A's are just kind of willing to just throw themselves to the side like that. Yeah, the A's are just like we want Vegas. Um, and, then, <laughs> yeah. and then I think right now our I I wouldn't put us there with Houston unless we get a starter, but I say we're comparable to Seattle. And I think that's going to be our biggest competition this year moving forward because with the added playoff teams, that's going to be the team that's either going to knock us out of the postseason or we got to jump to get into the postseason. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, yeah. Yeah, the Angels are going to – it's going to be, have to be the wild card. It may maybe have to come down to the one-game playoff or whatever. Mm. But if we can backtrack just a little bit to go back to what oh, we're talking about as far as – no, it's cool. Yeah. But as far as what, like, when we're talking about Perry mm – -hmm. And as far as like what we have as far as pitching and all that, it could be a situation where, you know, Perry's maybe waiting to see how Reed and uh, Canning are going to do in camp. Mm -hmm. Because depending on how one of those guys does, you know, could, or even both of them, could be the uh, reason why. Uh, Perry pulls the trigger on a trigger. Yeah, he's making a move, huh? Right, yeah. So he maybe, you know, he just wants to see, you know, because these are young guys and, you know, they have really good possibilities Absolutely. of being really fucking good. And, you know, to trade one, you know, to trade one so soon and then watch him go flourish and be a champion somewhere else, you know, it's the same it's fucking way Angels fans deal with all the damn time. Yeah. So who knows? That's, that could be what he's doing. You know, he doesn't, you know, don't want to make a, a move just yet, you know, just to make a move. Let you know, let's see what these guys do. And even if Castillo's gone, even though I don't see the Reds being so much in a hurry to trade their ace, you know, I'm sure they're listening to offers, but they're not like, oh, we got to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So he could be. It is an Oakland. After, just... after spring training, yeah. And, and you also got to understand, you know, you don't want to just start trading guys away because, you know, there's still a trade deadline too. So what if we're in the mix and, you know, we need a piece or two here in July? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, One thing I will say also, you know, kind of to piggyback off of what Randy said, you know, I I think that is a good point. Maybe we're Perry will wait this one year because I think we can, we can all agree three years is a reasonable window as to what the angels have. Mm -hmm. If we can make the wild card this year with what we have, who are, you know, these young uh, pieces rising up to clog those holes. Mm -hmm. I think I I wouldn't mind waiting a year. If that's what Perry said, if Perry's like, you know what, man, like I'm gonna make this one more minor tweak move. Yeah, maybe that is signing a guy like a like a Tyler Anderson. It might not be exciting, but put him in the mix. If Perry were to come out and be like, "Hey, sorry, this is what we got," I legitimately feel like these youngsters are gonna step up this year. And if not, the next year I will evaluate them. And if we do uh, we don't do well this year with those young guys, I'm completely willing to sell everything to compete for the next two years. Because that's what our window is. If that, if he was straight up like that, I would take it. Because we don't, we haven't had a lot of straightforward GMs lately. Yeah. So if he can tell, like, hey, this is what's going to happen. I believe in these young guys. Here's why. I'd be like, you know what? I'm okay with that. Because over the last couple of years, I've seen that winning championships comes from building from within. Mm-hmm. The Cubs yep. did it. The Royals did it. You know what I mean? You name it. The Giants did it for years. You name it. They built from within to get to where they are. Yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's it's always come down to scouting, and that's what this team has lacked in the last few years. You brought it up, Fernando. It's been a while. I think that's why fans are are, are a little more harsh because we last year was seven years of bad luck. We haven't made a postseason in seven years. We don't want to go on eight. I think we got to use the Al Davis. Uh, uh, mentality of just win, baby, but just yeah. get to the playoffs, baby. Just get to the postseason. I like Fernando's assessment of everything, too. Uh, like, just get there and then, you know, see what we're lacking for the following year, evaluate the team, and let's do it. Hey, man, this is baseball. Once you make the dance, you know, they can't take that away from you. You don't know what happens when you make the dance. That's true. Uh, yeah, I say that all the time, day. man. You just got to make the postseason. That's a whole yeah. different season. It's like, I kid you not, dude. And they don't say this anymore, and they haven't shit for probably 15 years. Mm. And, but it was an old saying, especially back when the Angels won the World Series. You can't script October, dude. Yep. Anything yep. and everything fucking happens in October, man. You just never know. Yeah. This the isn't whole, like – It's a completely different season. Mm-hmm. You you guys are football guys. I'm not anymore. You know, I, I watched a lot this year compared to in the past. But my point is with a lot of these other major sports, it's kind of predictable. Most of the time, right? You know, people always make the, oh, NFL scripted jokes or, you know, NBA, you know, you put LeBron or, you know, Durant on a team, they're going to make the finals or, you know, Steph Curry. You know, basketball, you can almost buy yourself a ring or at least buy yourself into contention. But with baseball, you never know what happens. You know what I mean? That's the beauty of baseball. Yeah, because you're not looking at the NBA and you're saying, like, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, pre-pandemic too, the Jazz had like the best record. No one was sitting there like, oh, yeah, the Jazz are going to <laughs> yeah. They're not going to the yeah. finals. So, I mean, yeah. you know, so so that's not going to happen. But in baseball, you know, who knows? I mean, the Rays should have beat the Dodgers in that ring pop yeah. season. You, so you could have had a small Mickey market. Mickey Mouse team. ring. Yeah, you, yeah, you could have had a small oh, market team there. Mickey Mouse. <laughs> in baseball, man, it just takes nine plus guys to win a fucking game. Just because if it was like any other sport. We got Trout and Otani. We should be fucking world champions every year. Right? Yeah. Right? But it don't work that way in baseball. You need and a whole these NBA. young fans just don't understand that. They really don't. You you, yeah. you need a young whole goddamn just don't understand it. You need a whole goddamn team because look what the Marlins did to, yeah. to the to the Yankees. They beat them in the World Series. Uh you know, they beat a good Cleveland Indians team back in the Yeah, Bulls. they did. The Diamondbacks beat the Yankees, and you know, so you have you have teams that can you know, put it together and just go on a run. Like, like uh, Fernando mentioned, the Royals, like you mentioned other small market teams. It's like that, that is the beauty of baseball. Like just get it takes the, the whole F- squad to get it done. man. Yeah. Get in the F. It doesn't matter. You have Barry Bonds. Like look at the angels beat big, bad Barry Bonds. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like, so it happens, man. Yeah. And that's, that's awesome. That's why we watch. Oh yeah. All right. So I know we were talking about building from within, but now to be total, to just do the complete opposite, I want to tear it down and I want to give you guys a couple of moves. I want you guys to tell me honestly what you guys think about these moves, okay? Mm-hmm. So for this, I kind of, uh, 
I, I asked Todd to participate with me and I want Randy to grade us as, you know, cause Randy is, you know, not filtered. He's, He'll be legitimate and honest. Wait, 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 wait. He's he's not filtered? No way. Yeah. <laughs> I thought he's just a PC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fast Times Under the Halo is screams PG. Yeah. PG Randy. <laughs> Clean That's family the- fun, like a Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> like a more like a more like a Hooters. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? He Woo! can kind of be PC sometimes, but he also is trying to get that money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. All right. So it's well the assignment that uh, that I, I give Todd here was like okay so ten million dollars to work with because we're playing with Artie money <laughs> you know what I mean we are so, the uh, salary tax obviously went up the threshold but Artie is trying to do that mm-hmm. so ten million dollars to try to get at least three players all right so this is move number one trade Max Stassi who is projected to get. $2.7 million this year in arbitration, and he will be a free agent after this year. So Ballpark will say that he's going to get two point seven. That's his project, according to spot track. And then Ryan Smith, who was on the Salt Lake Bees last year, he has a 2022 ETA to Major League Baseball, so he's projected to make it this year. Um, he was 7-7 seven and seven with a 4.24 ERA last year. Okay, so we would trade both of them to the Diamondbacks, and in exchange, we would get Carson Kelly, the catcher. He's projected to make $3 million this year and won't be a free agent until 2025. So serviceable catcher, serviceable defense, and he'll hit about what Stassi hits. The 270 ballpark, 280-ish, you know, he'll hit about 15 outs. He'll give you about 70 RBIs. So you're basically getting a younger version of Max Stassi with more potential because he's younger. What do you think, Randy? Well, oh, how long has he been in the majors? I would have to look that up. It's definitely a while. But he's at least played over 100 games each season, right? Let's see. Because if if, if you tell me yes on that, then fuck yeah, dude. I mean, you got me sold right there. No, in 2019, he had 111 games. In 2020, he played in 39 games, but remember, there's only 60. Okay. Okay. And then in 2021, 98 games. Okay. Still better than Stassi. Yeah, I do it. I like it. He's got a career 319 on base percentage. So, okay. I mean, so we don't do- we don't need a smashing, hitting catcher. I mean, we just we just need a guy that can make the throws and you know a guy that can frame decently. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. a guy that can stay healthy. That's that's just that's just let's just cut it down. A guy that can stay healthy. So this is kind of my big one. John Means. Oh yeah. He's, pre- he's expected to make three uh three uh million dollars, three point two five million, sorry. And he won't be a free agent until 2025. So right there, I'm going for youth with two young guys. He was six and nine last year with the 3.62 ERA. Keep in mind, he does play in Baltimore. Obviously, Baltimore, you have to face one of the hardest divisions in baseball. Sure. And I would also want to get Connor Norby from the Orioles, who is a youngster. He's got a 264 average last year with an on-base percentage of 380, and he can play in multiple positions. He's projected to make the majors in 2024, and he can be a second baseman, and he could potentially help at shortstop. So two younger guys – Connor and Orby can be our answer potentially either at second base or shortstop in roughly two years, you know, and with an on-base percentage of 380 in the minors, that means he's got a good eye. We need a person with a good eye. Um, I'd have to do a little bit of research on his defense, but you know, he's still young. And in exchange, we would give up Jordan Adams, who is one of our top outfield prospects and another guy who I know Todd's going to flip out, David McKinnon. Mm. two really high potential bats. David McKinnon has shown great flashes as a first baseman, um, great defense. His defense has come a long way if you look at what he was on the 66ers. I guarantee you he'd make the Orioles roster real quick. Oh, yeah. Nope. Well, the reason why a lot of people would be like, the Orioles would never take that trade. I mean, we could throw in another guy, you know, a player to be named later situation, but Jordan Adams – you know, high-level outfield prospect. 
and you know David McKinnon, top first baseman prospect for them because they don't have a top uh, 30 prospect who's a first baseman except for number 29. And he's not projected to make it for a couple of years. So McKinnon can be a pretty high prospect for them right away. That's true. That's Keep true. in mind, they also still have the really bad Chris Davis contract. And he was the first baseman. <laughs> so they'd probably want to save a little bit of money at first base for a guy who can still produce. So David McKinnon, love the guy. He was a great interview. But, you know, this is just me playing GM right now. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, if you look at it in the sense of, you know, if this guy pans out for us in the minors, you know, by the time he comes up, you think you figure he's he'll be ready by the time uh, Fletcher's on the downside of his contract. And who knows, maybe maybe Fletcher, by the time he gets on that downside, maybe he just ain't doing as good. And maybe. if this guy's ready, then you, you got a young guy ready to go. I like it, yeah. Like okay, it. and then John Means can – basically slot in pretty quick as a fighting for an ace on our team. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine Otani, Syndergaard, Sandoval, and John Means as your top four? All of a sudden, we go from the Angels may just being an average bullpen to the Angels being a pretty scary bullpen in Major League Baseball. Oh, yeah. Means is yep. a no-hitter before, too. Dude's got yeah. – Yeah, he's got good stuff. Would you take that trade, Todd, or would you be okay with that? Oh yeah, I'd definitely be okay with that. You know, they uh, he's a scary starter, but given that they're making him an ace in Baltimore, that's a lot of pressure. You slot him to a three or four, like you're saying, dude. It, he could he could actually maximize his talent. Yeah, I wouldn't. You know, I looked into guys like Jeremiah Jackson and Kyron Paris, but the Orioles have some other shortstop and infield prospects. So I try to go for guys who, you know, they might be interested in. Like I said, I don't mind throwing in a, another pitcher in there for them to help them out. All right, um, this was the last move I have. This one was kind of my Hail Mary because I was kind of out of money after this. I only had about like um, $1.8 to work with. Mm -hmm. So Austin, Gom yeah. <laughs> Austin Gomber, uh, kind of a Hail Mary there. Put for the Rockies, 9-9 nine nine with the 4.53 ERA. He's not going to take the world by storm, but what he can do is at least compete for a sixth or fifth spot in the rotation. And I would give up David Daniel or a player to be named later or cash. So, you know, that was my, that was my Hail Mary move. I was out of money. <laughs> Who I really want in my fantasy world would be Merrill Kelly from the Diamondbacks. That would be, ooh. That would be my uh, that would be my dream right there. That'd be your guy, huh? Yeah, he'd be a good get from the Diamondbacks. All right, Todd, who you got? Uh, you're putting me on the spot. I was thinking free. Um, hey, you can go with whatever. I was just trying to go trades because trades you can control the narrative of what you're paying. That's true. I'll just give you a couple of free agents. I think that would help the team right now. Uh, okay, yeah, they're way cheap. Uh, one is uh, Galvis, Freddie Galvis. As a good backup infielder, um, because he could play just about everywhere in the infield. As far as a catcher, because I'm not thrilled with Suzuki, as we've we've talked about, uh, I do still think that there's some value. Where'd he go right here? I just had the name Wilson Ramos. I know he's been talked about coming here for the last couple seasons, but I know he's 34, but he could still hit. He could still provide good catching. I think he's better than Kurt. Um, you could bat him around eighth or ninth down there. Um, I would like you don't really need to break the bank uh, with any of these players. The trades you were doing were with with teams that are obviously rebuilding, and you can give them if you can give pieces, you know, for a player or two that's maybe just starting to hit their groove. Teams like that, the Reds, the you know, um, uh, you know those East Coast teams, they'll they'll t they'll take it. Even like the Nats, the Nats have a good farm system. Where you can probably get a good a couple players like the Pirates, they they, they dealt their catcher. What was his name? Um, they they didn't give up. They didn't get too much for him, but they, you know, the other team. I think it was it was the Diamondbacks that got his the catcher from the Pirates. I'm okay. See, I'm throwing you guys. Out. Yeah, I'm like I. Have no, <laughs> I don't know. I'm lost there, my guy. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. Okay, my my point is like I'm not gonna go into that deep dive. But but I I get, I get you. There, there's moves that the Angels I don't think they they don't have to necessarily do. It's more like what you're talking about with these guys performing right now. 
and getting a good mi half minor league system uh, season in. And then by the trade deadline, you have more options where maybe a John Means will come up uh, because the Orioles are buried in fifth place again. Uh, there's only so much he could do. So pieces like that from other teams, uh, that's why I think Castillo, if he's not traded by the, uh, you know, the closer we get to the season starting, he ain't going to go nowhere. He's going to be on their opening day roster. They got to sell tickets. But if the Reds are, are getting pounded and they're in fourth or fifth place, look to them, look to the Cubs, uh, teams like that to where you can make deals because we're going to have to trade equity this season. And oh. Yeah, you know, speaking of the Cubs, I, I I would have totally taken a look at Kyle Hendricks. I know we've talked about this in the group chat or as Brandy calls it, our roundtables. But uh, <laughs> And Chase was immediately like, no, that's a bad contract. And I'm just like, hey, man, bad contract for a bad contract. Give me Kyle Hendricks. I will give you Justin Upton, and hell, I'll give you a prospect too. Well, the thing, was, the thing was for me, dude, I mean, look, at if the, if the Cubs are done and they're not playing good, what about Stroman? A guy that we we wanted from the start, but he's like he flirted with us coming here, and then he's like, I want to be on a winner, and then he goes to the Cubs. It didn't make sense. Like I thought, I thought they made a typo, and he signed with the Sox. Yeah, know? yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, but uh, but that that'd be a guy that I don't know if you guys would take a flyer on him. If you know, Marcus bat, Stroman. Yeah, Marcus Stroman. Stroman? Oh, like, hell yeah. Say, for instance, the Cubs are... I don't think that's taking a flyer, dude. That's taking the whole goddamn stack of papers. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big... I mean, that's a big contract, but, I mean, I'm willing to do it. I mean... Hey, but for what him... did he get, like, three years, 70 million? That's actually not bad. That's... I, I thought it was 68. But but that's... Yeah, that's I would... Fuck yeah, I would have done that. But see, you could do what he what Fernando was saying. You could, you could package up in, you know contract for or, or pay half his contract let them eat whatever is left on upton yeah 23 a year he's getting 71 million 71. for three years okay that's not bad at all dude yeah that was one of the moves where i sat back and i was like we couldn't do that yeah dude that whole that whole fucking stroman thing was just it was a head scratcher for me i'm like wait a minute cubs yeah, yeah. you're happy to leave the fucking mess to go to the fucking <laughs> cubs and you only signed a three-year, seventy-one million dollar deal. Yeah, like, uh, dude, I don't know. Dude, I, it's so fucking weird, dude. He may not even be on the Cubs past fucking July. That's probably what's going to happen. <laughs> so here's no a sense, name dude. that people keep throwing out there. I don't know how to feel, and I'm sure you guys know exactly where I'm going with this. Trevor Bauer, would you take? The Trevor Bauer contract. What is it? It's a lot. I think he's making 45 this year. Oh, shit. Can we even afford that? No. I mean, we. I think we technically can now because of the uh, – Oh, the, the sour cap? Yeah, it went up. Like, what, 290 now? Well, here, here's my thing I'm hearing about him. Okay, first He's off, getting 35 this year, sorry. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I, was, I was like, nah, that's kind of high. No, but um, think about this, though. Last year, all the Dodgers players took him off of their social media. The Dodgers wanted nothing to do with him. They kind of judged him before he was tried and, and convicted or tried and found innocent. And now you have them saying, okay, in a court of law, you're innocent. Technically, he should return to baseball. Now you got the league in Manfred saying, no, wait a second. You're still on uh, administrative. We're still going to investigate ourselves. Yeah. And then do you want to bring that into your locker room with his baggage? Because either way, he's, you know, he's he's accused of or likes beating women, whether you think it's all sexual or not. You know what I mean? Like, like it, there's a fine line where some people are going to judge no matter what. So is he worth the problem to you guys? I don't see the money, but just worth the um. Well, if, if it's going to come with all that shit, hell no, dude. I mean, we're already dealing with the Skaggs fucking crap. Mm -hmm. Um, but my thing is, is in the court of law, you can't even be tried for the same thing twice. Yeah, well, unless so okay this guy, <laughs> and then get you on something else. Be, <laughs> how can how can Trevor be um found innocent, and then a goddamn sports lawyer say, "Well, no, we're going to do our own investigation." Like, no, motherfucker, it's over. Well, yeah. because it's not you know a formal court of law. You know what I mean? So that's how they can get away with it. They're thinking oh, they're they're thinking the first rad. time was obviously. They're thinking well, they're brand. But go ahead, Fernando. Sorry. Sorry. And for the record, I wasn't raising my hand like, hey, I would take it. I was raising my hand because I wanted to add something and not be rude like always. 
<laughs> no, 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 yeah, if it's good. coming with all the baggage, hell no, dude. You don't. I mean, like I said, we're dealing with the Skags crap. I mean, you're gonna have to, you're gonna be hearing that all year. This is so, a perfect match. Yeah, I wouldn't match. want to deal with it. This is a perfect match for Artie Moreno. Why? Because Artie Moreno is a vacuum and Trevor Bauer is a dirtbag. So, oh. <laughs> so because of that, it's the perfect storm. And you don't mean the baseball type dirtbag, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, I, part of me is like, I, I, I want to win. The other part of me is like, Trevor Bauer, go find a white crown and color a zebra. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. It's, yeah. it, it's, well, it's kind of hard to win when middle. you got a lot of fucking shit, you know, from outside noise coming in. I mean, guys can't, I mean, even if it's just about you, it's hard for your other teammates to have to, because I mean, they're going to be getting asked questions too. So it's hard for them to fucking have to worry about, you know, what they got to take care of in season when they're having to ask questions about fucking you. Well, and, and so, we know no. that the players obviously hear this, the noise, quote unquote, yeah. because there was an article today. I think it was, might've been Bob Nightingale who released it, who was like, after the Angels off season from hell, Mike Trout's ready to return. You know what I mean? They asked them like, oh, what was this off season like for you with all this stuff? It's like, yeah. what? I don't yeah. know. It pisses me off though when people from the national media are over here talking about, you know, things like that, that they shouldn't be concerned about. You know, but they won't talk about things that they should be concerned about, like minor league players getting paid jack shit for spring training. It's all the narrative. That's what it is. I literally, I went on our Twitter account. I mean, Randy follows us on Twitter now. If you don't, at Halos in the infield. <laughs> and I literally tweeted like five or six national baseball writers. And I was like, hey, how come you don't talk about life in the minor leagues? We all know that ESPN and MLB Network won't be relevant in a couple of years anyway. ESPN won't exist in three years. Why? Because of people like us. Because people go to podcasts or Instagram pages for their news now. They don't go to ESPN. I haven't watched ESPN in a long time. Actually, you know what? I'm lying. I watch it every night in the hotel because I need something to go to sleep to. And it can't be <laughs> too exciting. So I need to put on Scott Van Pelt and his bald ass to make me go to sleep. Oh, you want to talk about his ex <laughs> uh, or hear him talk about exciting tennis and golf to lead the show? Oh, that, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah. See, oh, don't worry. Tiger Woods got inducted into the Golf Hall of Fame. And I'm like, hey, I mean, I'll tip my cap to an athlete. But, I mean, you know. Dude, dude yeah. ESPN has always tried to shy away from, like, the major sports or just stick to football and then push, like, baseball to the side. They always have tried to do that. And They're it, like, hey, yeah, that's Mike Trout got an MVP, but who cares about that? Megan Rapino yeah, wants yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, LeBron like, James wants to. Colin Kaepernick did this today. Yeah, let's listen to sports stars uh, criticize you on how you are as a person. Yeah. <laughs> that's where sports has lost us. That's why you have the NFL uh, network is doing great, uh, the MLB network, because they focus on one thing. They stick to sports, and that's what we want to do. That's why you're right, Fernando. If you want to come and hear your team, you have plenty of platforms to listen to it on. And yes. people that care about it, not not the with ulterior motives for the most part. I mean, yeah. yeah. I stopped watching ESPN back shit like 2000, it must have been like 9 or 10. I mean, dude. Yeah. I mean, by like fucking 6 p.m., their, their fucking entire program is on a fucking loop. Unless yeah. breaking yeah. news happens. I'm like, this is just a joke, dude. That's my favorite. Make sure to tune in at 7 o'clock for our next live show. I'm like, this hasn't been live in like 12 hours. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. It's, and, and, but yeah, they're just, it's, it's, they, they, they push what they want to push, you know, they talk about who they want to talk about. I mean, we got two of the greatest fucking players on the planet and nobody ever fucking talks about them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. seriously. The Yankees yeah. could be last fucking place. Angels could be fucking Goddamn 162 and 0, but we're going to talk about the Yankees for 12 hours. Or every yeah. other, every other Sunday night baseball game is Boston versus New York. <laughs> no <laughs> shit, dude. These guys no play like shit. 65 times a year. Dude, baseball is going to hate next year when they get rid of a lot of the divisional games. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one thing. You know what? We're probably going to have to cut it here pretty soon because we're going like on two hours. But uh, we're definitely going to have to talk about the – CBA probably on the next episode. But what I will say, one thing I love about the CBA is the fact that they're getting rid of a lot of the divisional games and you will now play every single team in baseball at least one time. I love that. That is cool. That is I cool. love it. So and we're not gonna, just going to have certain weeks where it's just interleague it's constantly all year round? Yeah, so every team. So we will play the Pirates, the Reds, at least once a year, either here or, you know, in that's, Anaheim oh, or their cool. home. I like once that. Once a year. 
Ah, uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, you yeah. got the universal DH. You have uh, and next yeah. year. I think they vote on the shift. Well, you know how many times? No, the here? shift is banned next year. This yeah, is the shift. last year of the shift. Yes, hell yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then also you have the pitch clock coming next year too. Well, and didn't they take away the seven inning double headers? They did. Yes. And that starts this year, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah cool. I also cool. hate the well. I, people are complaining about like, oh, well, there's bigger bases. That's like three extra inches. And I'm like, guys, it's honestly not worth the injury. If your guy got hurt at first, you'd be pissed. Oh you know yeah, I mean? especially with the Angels. <laughs> what about the extra innings rule? Are we still doing the fucking dude no. on second? No more runner on second. Oh, yeah. thank God. Oh, did you guys hear that uh, on the uh, starting this year in the All Star Game? There's no more uh, ties, or there's no more extra innings. Sorry. Now, if it's tied after the ninth, they do a home run derby. Oh, uh, that's sick. Oh that's yeah, 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 yeah. I heard about that. That's dope. Yeah, See, that that that. Hockey... That's like some backyard shit right there, dude. Well, yeah, but I, I mean. Love it. That's why hockey got like really cool with it because uh, hockey decided to do the whole shootout thing. Yeah, that, mm. that's intense. If you've ever been to a live hockey game and they do it, oh shootout, yeah, it's freaking awesome. Or even in the overtime, they're like, hey, you know, three what? on three, three on three, yeah, it's freaking yeah. Awesome. You're hearing it right here. Starting next, I don't, I don't know when hockey season starts, but whenever it is, I'm saying it right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give hockey a shot next season. All right, go okay. Ducks. I'm holding. Go no. Ducks, baby. Go Coyotes. <laughs> Let's go, Coyotes! <laughs> I like losing. That's why I'm an Angels, Broncos, and Coyotes fan. <laughs> oh, family that loves Hey, Angels. screw you. I'll take your Super Bowls right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Hey, yeah, it's true. Well, and I, you know, I won't say anything about the Broncos because Todd's a Seahawks fan. You got Will. I, All right. I know. I texted you immediately, and I was like, I hate Russell Wilson. <laughs> and you know what's funny, dude? Is I got that. I t- I got a picture. Because the picture I got off was a, is a parody account, and it was uh, it was Wilson in a Broncos jersey, and Todd's just like, okay. So, I just, I just and then literally, what, 48 hours? It's fucking, yeah. it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and you probably I'll gonna... start going to burger counts for my news. <laughs> hey, you should. Like, uh, who was it today who reported, like, Suzuki? Uh, say, yes, yeah, Suzuki was going to the Padres, and it was a burner, and they fell for it? It might have been Bob Nightingale. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just like you're an idiot. <laughs> I wish it was you know, check, this, this guy had 200. Race. Yeah, I'd be okay with that. Oh, well, this guy's got 200 followers, and you're gonna trust what he said? No blue yeah, check no mark. Kid. You're a reputable writer. Yeah. <laughs> you, got uh, you should have more. You should have more uh, in know than that motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm a bro. Do I have more inside sources than you do? Oh wow. Oh, uh, all right, man. Uh, anything else this week? I think that's. I think it's good because we could start the next time we're on. We could start talking about players actually performing in Tempe. Yeah, so and then, excited uh, for them. Yeah, and then we so we could start our, our evaluations. We could start, uh, like you said, maybe talk about the CBA and a lot of the stuff that we just touched on right now, but get more in depth on it and get our points of views on how it's either going to hurt the game or make the game better. When are we going yeah. to announce the 2002 celebration week? Because, you know, I've been talking to somebody this almost entire time about trying to think of a day and a time. I will not release it until I know for sure he's coming on, but he is a 2002 World Series champion. Oh, I heard that. You, yeah, I forgot to ask you about that. But, yeah. Uh, I, I'll tell you I guys off air. Okay. I'll tell you guys off air. Okay. Well, because thir- Thursday's opening day, April 7th, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to maybe – start that either we can start the week before on a monday or we can actually have it culminate on the fifth give us a day off before opening day and then go from there like like do our view a view parties on the fourth and fifth would you want to do yeah yeah we could probably do that okay the sixth is my kid's birthday so i'll be out that day that works that works anyway it's not right before the season so yeah let, let, let's announce that let's let's do that okay. we'll start that uh that celebration week over the weekend and then it'll dip into the next to right before the season. Yeah, yep. I mean, I like and it. keep it a keep. Uh, Randy, you have a design on your page, right? That you were going to release for that. So I mean, keep it a Randy's account if he's going to release that merch. Yeah, ch- take a look at that the logo for the 2002 thing. So we're really hyped up for that, man. Randy does good work, as you see his hat. And don't forget your uh, golden ring hat. Yeah, yeah, he- I like the golden ring hat. Creation right here. I still don't understand over the years how this has never been a fucking alternate hat, dude. It should be. This has because always been my dream hat. Ring. This it's has always been one of my dream hats, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's a golden ring. That's why. 
<laughs> they don't own the golden ring. Sure All don't. Right. Hey, look at the infield does. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, Todd. All right. Well, uh, that's been the show for today. If you like, please tell a friend, give us a five-star review on podcast form or check us out on YouTube and uh, check out the website, the new and improved website. So that for all like, you- comment and subscribe. Yes. Check us out. <laughs> all the mer- He was itching to say that. Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so for Todd, Los Angelitos! Todd Fox and Randy Yalls. Fernando. Oh, come on. You got to go. With the- <laughs> <laughs> Close it out, my man. (laughs) Viva los angelitos!